Okay, so I have printed everything out that's on my website. What you've got is this is the this is the primary piece which fits the 360 motor very nicely. It's got the little groove in the middle of that that takes the boss at the end of that and the screw holes are exactly the right size. This is the piece that takes the impeller and I've created this uh, as a square piece for two reasons. One is so that you can decide how it is you're going to bolt this into your boat. It gives you a purchase point and also so that you can open these up and do what you like with them. These are the inlet and the outlet reversing. So everyone has a different need. Um, in my case I just added some small pieces of brass tube onto there and fitted it into my ballast tank. This is the impeller. It's got a slot down the bottom so that it misses the screws and this is the cap that goes on the end. And this is the piece of perspex, I still I keep this on so I can see it, that's going to bolt onto there and you're going to screw it in ensuring it doesn't collide with any of the holes that you put into it. You have two screws which are what two and a half mil metric and uh, they are 12 mil long you generally have to cut them to size. That's all you need to start with. There are o-rings that you need and I'm going to suggest as you go along you work out you, you can have uh, you need at least one o-ring you need an o-ring for the cap that goes on the stern if you're going to go for a subtech valve you're going to need another o-ring so I'd suggest if you're going to do all of that you wait till you get to that point and you toddle down to the shop that sells o-rings and you get them all fitted and while you if you're going to get this you also get a couple of six and a half mil stainless steel ball bearings. These motors are as cheap as chips, probably five or six dollars if you get them off the internet. I spent nine dollars off these by going to an electronic shop. And so I think we're ready to go. Now I'm just going to stop quickly. I've come to the end of this process. I've been building this particular pump. But you would notice that in my parts I also have a larger base and a larger impeller. The reason I put those in is so that you can use those instead of the standard one if you want some extra power, for example, for a bow thruster. I'm not particularly sure that that's necessary. I'm aware that this throws the water out as it does. But what you can do with this is make this hole much bigger and get a much bigger outlet, which could be, which could make all the difference. So that's what that is doing it in, in the, um, on the web page. You'll find that you've got these that you can use, or the standard one here, which I think is good enough for anything. I'll just mention too, I'm using these ones. This is a second run and these are all uh, out of red material. They're a bit rougher and I was very happy to try these out because the other grey one was very fine and this is less fine and I just wanted to make sure that this would work as well and in fact it does. It's just a matter of being careful how you put it together using a bit of silastic and you get a good response. Just a suggestion. The steps involved are, we bolt it together, right, so I've bolted this one up. Now the next thing you need to think about is, you've already thought about this, do I want this to be an enclosed one or not? just for your th thoughts because that also involves how do I fit this to the boat. In my case 
I want to put a tube on one side that goes into the ballast tank on my Nautilus and I'll put a hole there and a screw from the ballast tank to hold that into place. So I know what I'm going to be doing and I am in fact going to be sealing it. Alright, so I've cleaned it all up. This little contraption here, it just uh, holds these um, tubes and this one takes, I've just drilled it out rather than trying to solder something together or whatever. It just sits into there and there's a hole that runs in there and runs out there and this goes up to the conning tower. This hole uh, comes out here and that's the one that sucks the air in, the, in and out. But this one is the pump in and that's, that needs to be right at the base of my tank. But this of course, so what I've done here is I've, let me just show you, I've drilled these out so that they will fit this, um, and I've drilled them both out the same size so that they, there's no flow issues, but I've, that will go in there and I can glue that in beautifully. Now this will go around like that and will sit here underneath everything. Now as long as I've got this at the base, this doesn't need to be at that angle at all. It's really going to be a, a sort of a cutting across at an angle. So I put this together. Let's look how it's going to sit. It's going to sit like that. And what I want to do is I want to put a screw in here so that when I fasten all of this on, that's going to screw into the top. So you can see why I'm thinking about doing this before anything. Let's get this right and then we can proceed. Okay, drilled a little hole through there and a little hole through there and they now happily meet together. Now when I put this on finally, I'm going to have epoxy in all of these little holes and running all the way along the side there. So that will, that will fit in there quite, quite nicely and it's pointing in the right direction. Alright, I've screwed these in and drilled these so that I can put the lid on. Um, I've decided I'm going to use this 8mm piece of brass. No, 7mm. That'll be a, a really good size to go into my ballast tank. So I'm going to drill this out at 7mm right across so that the water flow is the same but I only need it on one side. Okay, once again the reason this is square is so that I can machine through that quite easily.